Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our community conversation for the Santa Rosa General Plan Update. It's great to have all of you here with us. I want to welcome you and thank you for making time to be with us this morning. My name is Jamila Jordan with MIG, and MIG is one of the uh, consulting firms who were selected in collaboration with PlaceWorks to help the City of Santa Rosa develop the General Plan Update and uh, we are excited to kick off our engagement process in earnest with today's conversation and we have a lot in store for you a lot of information and really we want to hear from you though that's the purpose of today is to hear your thoughts your comments and your ideas uh, so we want to welcome you and thank you again for making time to be with us i'm going to step through just for some of us who may not be as familiar with Zoom, how to use this online platform, just a couple of the key ways that you can chime in and give your input today. And uh, the first one is using the chat feature. And you might notice a toolbar at the bottom of your screen there, and it includes the chat option. And you would simply click that and type in uh, for this particular conversation, you can type in the select questions and comments, and that would direct any questions or comments you have throughout the life of our program here today to our uh, staffer who's working behind the scenes, and they will share your comments and questions with us, and we will address them as we move through the meeting. So this is one of the best ways for you to give input, share ideas, share questions, as we move through the conversation. So that chat feature is uh, an important way for you to connect with us today. And another feature that I wanna call your attention to is raising your hand. And this lets us know that you have something that you wanna share. And this one, we're really gonna encourage you to use this feature as we get towards the end of our program, as we get closer to uh, more of the open session. Uh, but this is another way for you to um, chime in and give your input. And you can click the raise hand option there that you can see you'll click on uh, the participants list and then you can simply click the raise hand option and that'll let us know that you want to share something and that we can call on you as quickly as we can. I also want to share just a couple of key principles and just as we would for an in-person conversation, we have a couple of just common courtesy agreements that we ask you all to follow as we move through our conversation today. I um, want to let you know that, as I mentioned, you can definitely feel free to share your comments and questions using that feature that I just shared with you. Uh, we ask that you be respectful of one another's opinions. We imagine there's a real diversity of people in the Zoom room here today, and we just ask that you be respectful of other thoughts and ideas. Uh, for any questions that we can't answer today, we'll be sure to follow up with you with more detailed responses after the session. Uh, we have several pause points throughout our program today for you to chime in, for you to share thoughts, questions, ideas, recommendations. We want to hear it all. Uh, and I want to just end on reminding you that this is just one meeting, and in fact, it's the first of our community conversations in a much longer, larger process. So this is a three-year effort, and today uh, is just one meeting in that much longer process. So there's no need to feel like you have to get everything in that you want to say today. Uh, there'll be plenty of other opportunities and ways for you to give your input to us as we move throughout the program and the process. I also want to just call our attention to this statement here from the city of Santa Rosa. And the city is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment that's free from disruption. And uh, we will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and are well staffed to monitor that everyone is participating respectfully. And if not, then we're gonna have to remove those individuals. And if necessary, we will also immediately have to end the meeting. And if the meeting is ended, we'll plan on recording another presentation without participants that will be posted on the project website. And this is to create a space where everyone feels safe, welcome to share their thoughts and ideas and can do so in a way that is consistent with transparency and just with civility. Um, so we ask you all to abide by that as we move through our program here. I also want to let you know that today's conversation is being recorded and so we will be uh, putting this up on the website and uh, allowing people to see it at their leisure if people were not able to join us in the real time uh, that they will be able to do it um, on demand so to speak and with that I want to turn it over to Andy Gustafson who is with the city of Santa Rosa to provide some welcome and opening remarks Andy
Andy, it looks like you are uh, muted. I've just unmuted you, Andy. Or we're... We are all adapting to the virtual world of way of doing meetings, so I apologize. Let me say again, thank you, Jamila, for that introduction. And, and I do want to wish everybody good, good morning and welcome to this community conversation about this general, this community involvement strategy. Again, my name is Andy Gustafson, and I'm city planner for the city of Santa Rosa. And for the next year, three years, we'll be managing the update of the city's general plan. It is an immense honor and responsibility for me to work with all of you and uh, my colleagues on this important and timely project. I do want to thank all of you for taking time to participate today. It's also a pleasure to acknowledge the support we have from Kaiser Permanente, which has provided us with a grant that allows us to expand community outreach and integrate health policy into the general plan. We also have an exciting collaboration with Latino service providers who will work with us on community outreach throughout this three-year program. Finally, I wish to recognize that we have David Gewing here, he's Director of Planning and Economic Development. And for those of you who I missed that are here from the city, um, I also uh, appreciate your attendance to this meeting. So um, today we have a presentation about the community involvement strategy for the general plan update. This presentation will include a series of live surveys that we will use to finalize the community involvement strategy. Your participation today will help to ensure that our general plan update is based on broad and inclusive public input and that we plan for a city where we all want to live, work, and play. What brings us to this point? We all recognize now as a pivotal moment in our city's history. Santa Rosa is grappling with immense challenges. In the last three years alone, we have faced devastating wildfires, an ongoing housing and homelessness crisis, repeated electrical grid blackouts, a global pandemic, calls for social justice and racial equity. These events have all of us discussing how our neighborhoods, our city will adapt to these changes. Most importantly, these events force us all to recognize how important it is to act to engage with our neighborhoods and our city. Your involvement here today will help, uh, help the city bounce forward to overcome these challenges and, become, and help the city become more sustainable, resilient, healthy, inclusive community. You will hear today the general plan will provide you with all an opportunity to shape your, city, your neighborhood and our city. Only through inclusive public engagement will we be able to set meaningful goals and actions that will guide how the city will adapt and grow in, in a way that is supported by everyone in the city. The general plan update will pull together and address many, if not all of the issues that are on our minds right now, including housing for all, neighborhood quality and connectivity, economic development, wildfire hazards and climate change, public health in all our neighborhoods and, and community groups, equitable access to community amenities and services, education access, environmental stewardship. The list is comprehensive. Most importantly, our general plan project team will ask you today, will present you with the plan and they will lay out that this strategy is a, is a toolbox that we will use to inform and get feedback from the community as we prepare the general plan. The project team will ask you if it includes the right tools to reach all groups and neighborhoods within our city. The team will present what we learned today and from comments that we will receive during our month long public review period to the city council. The community involvement strategy is tentatively scheduled for the council's August 18th meeting. Finally, if you want more information about the general plan update, or the community involvement strategy, please go to our website by searching Santa Rosa 2050 on your favorite web browser. If you have any comments or suggestions um, after this meeting, please email them to us at gpcomment at srcity.org. And with that, I really, uh, again, thank you for attending today's meeting. And I'll turn it back to, or over to Dan Anstead, or actually, yes, 
Um, well, what I'd like to do is introduce the next pre uh, presenter, which is Van Amsten. And, and you will also hear again from Jamila, Jam Jamila Jordan later in the meeting uh, as she presents the community involvement strategy. I turn it over to you, Dan. Thanks so much, Andy. And I'll actually take it from here. Appreciate those welcome and opening remarks there. Really helps to set the stage for today's conversation. As Andy mentioned, we have a, a couple of other presenters here, myself included, and then my colleague Dan Amson from MIG. We also have another a number of other individuals on our call today who are here supporting the meeting from Amy Lyle, Claire Hartman of the City of Santa Rosa, Carolyn Verhine, Anna Padilla, Blaise Saika of MIG, and then we're also really excited to have our colleagues from PlaceWorks on the line, Charlie Knox, Andrea Howard, and then our colleague Michelle Gervais. So we have a full team represented to uh, respond to, answer your questions, and hear your feedback points. And these are individuals who will be involved throughout the full entirety of the GPU process. So today's conversation, what do we have in store for you today? We have three parts. The first is a conversation around the general plan update. What is it? Why is it important? How does it relate to my everyday life? From there, we want to share what are the highlights related to the community involvement strategy, also known as the CIS. And that's a document that was released, I believe it was maybe about three, four weeks ago or so. And so hopefully you all had a chance to review that and uh, bring some of your comments and ideas to today's conversation. If not, it's on the website. There's also a summary document that captures sort of the high level feedback points of the CIS uh, for those who don't have time to read the full in-depth document. So we'll go through some of the activities and tools that are outlined in the CIS for all of you, and then we'll wrap it up with next steps and give you a sense of what's coming next in our process. Uh, so that's what we have in store for you today. We also want to leave time for you to ask other general questions, comments, and, and share other feedback points with us. So uh, we feel like we'll have plenty of time to do so today. And again, I want to welcome you all to our community conversation kickoff. And to get us started, we want to get a sense of who's in the room today. And we have a couple of key polling questions for you. And I'm going to start our polling now. And the first question that we have is, what's been bringing you joy lately? What's been bringing you joy? Is it A, spending time with family and loved ones? B, spending time outdoors in nature? Santa Rosa is a beautiful city, beautiful place. A, a C, excuse me, a new hobby. D, working on home projects. We often have a lot of time at home these days. Is it E, gardening at home? Is it F, enjoying art? That may include music, dance, painting, you name it, or G, something else, something that we haven't thought of here. We want to know what's bringing you joy lately. And we have, uh, see, three people have commented so far. Let's go ahead and you just simply click in your response, and we'll give you some time to do that. We haven't quite heard from everyone yet. We're gonna keep it running here. What's been bringing you joy? So let's go ahead and see these results right now, everyone. I know on a Saturday morning, I only wanna talk about joy. And the results are a, spending time with family and loved ones. You all overwhelmingly think that that is what's been bringing you joy most, followed by gardening at home. We have a couple of gardeners in the house here today, working on home projects and spending time outdoors. This is excellent, everyone. We have a, two more questions for you that we're gonna go to here. The next one is, we wanna get a sense of, are you a resident of the city of Santa Rosa? Are you a resident of the city of Santa Rosa? Have option A, yes, option B, no. Okay, I think we had just about all the results in here. Let's go and see the outcome. Yes, overwhelmingly we have the city of Santa Rosa is well represented amongst residents here today. Uh, so thank you all for making time to be with us. And we have one more question for you. And this question is, which category best describes the organization, agency, community group that you represent today? Is it A, community-based organization, B, 
business, C, government agency, D, neighborhood group or resident, let's, let's consider that, or E, other. All right, I think we've heard from just about everyone. So let's see the results. As you can see, community-based organizations are well represented here today, as well as neighborhood groups or residents. Uh, business is an, another option here, and other, and I'm curious for the others, why don't you go ahead and type in the chat what the other represents for you? What would you say is best describing who you're representing today? Okay, so thank you everyone for participating in that poll, those polling options there. Uh, this is just for us to get a sense of who's in the room here today and um, give us a sense of how we can maybe extend our outreach further to invite other people to participate into the conversation. So now I'm excited to pass it to my colleague Dan who will give us an overview of the general plan update process and what you all have to look forward to. Dan, take it away. Thanks, Jamila, and good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Dan Amsden. I'm with MIG as well, uh, and I'm the overall project manager for the general plan update. I'm <clears throat> working closely with Andy and Jamila and the whole team here over the next uh, several years on this really important and honestly, I think a really exciting project as well. And as Andy mentioned, you know, this is uh, a pivotal time in Santa Rosa's history and a great opportunity to really continue this community discussion on the future of Santa Rosa and the future of the community and how we can bounce forward. And while there's a lot of challenges, there's also a lot of opportunities uh, to change policy or programs or to reinvent new ideas or think about new things. So a general plan update is honestly something that most cities don't do that often, every 15 or 20 years. The city currently has an adopted general plan. It was last adopted in 2009 and is a bit, uh, not as outdated, but it's definitely a time to rethink the vision, the goals, the principles of that plan, which is really gonna be the heart of this process. So the first key question is, well, what is a general plan? Well, it is the city's overarching policy document for land use, uh, new development, mobility, health, sustainability, equity of services and programs, and protection of resources. Uh, it's really considered a blueprint or almost a constitution that uh, decisions by city council, appointed officials need to follow the general plan. It really provides this overarching guidance. Uh, it is required by the state to be a comprehensive document. And what that means is it looks at a range of issues, topics, uh, and areas of interest but it also has to be internally consistent. What that means is one, it ties all these different issues together from a policy standpoint. But if you have a policy in one chapter, let's say housing, that policy needs to be consistent with policies in every other chapter. So it really makes um, an effort for us to think about everything holistically and working together and integrating. So for the city, the key way of thinking about a general plan is, as I mentioned, is this overarching policy document and guidance. But a lot of decisions by the city, whether it's uh, updating specific plans like the downtown specific plan right now or others, making changes to the zoning or subdivisions, uh, approvals for individual projects, building permits, all of these different actions need to be consistent with the general plan. Very intentionally, it is general in nature and more policy guidance. And as you move down this pyramid, other plans, actions get more detailed as well. The state requires every city to look at a range of chapters or topics, and there's requirements uh, for certain actions or policies within these chapters. This is, for lack of better terms, sort of the, the minimum threshold for general plans, but the city has tremendous discretion for what topics, what policies, what ideas to include in the general plan. And that really is a starting point for how important these community conversations and engagement will be over the next three years, is to really get the community's ideas and uh, vision encapsulated in this new plan.
So some big picture or key topics that include in the plan. Uh, we know the city started some community conversations in advance of the update uh, last summer. <clears throat> but as I mentioned, the general plan is going to address land uses, but more importantly, areas of change. Most parts of the city don't need or desire new development, more intense development, but certain areas and certain neighborhood centers may uh, feel the need for increased uses or services or schools or facilities and really thinking about um, where they're most appropriate and how they can be implemented over time. Tied together all in or uh, connecting all of this is a multimodal mobility system. So roads for driving, but also for bikes, for pedestrians, for transit, uh, given the range of this plan, also for autonomous vehicles, which may be here in 15 or 20 years as well. So really thinking about how people move through the city, access schools, access, access jobs, commercial areas will be key as well. We know given a lot of recent events, the fires in particular, natural hazards, flooding, wildland fire areas, but also natural resources are really important as we talk about this holistic and comprehensive planning effort. And taking these into account from a planning and policy standpoint, it will be really important to ensure the city is resilient in the future and also becomes more sustainable. In addition, this is a city guiding policy document. So the allocation and distribution and staffing of public facilities and services uh, throughout the city is also really key and making sure the infrastructure and the programs reach every neighborhood is gonna be an important part of this process. In addition, as Andy mentioned, we also know there are some very timely and very important topics that we want to engage the community and discuss through this process. One key is around housing and how we can create housing for all. Partly that's a range of different densities or types of housing and different affordability, whether it's market rate, um, workforce affordability, or affordable subsidized housing. But it can also be and should be looking at reducing barriers to home rentals and home ownerships. And a, a, a very key topic here as well is building upon local and regional homeless strategies and transition to permanent housing uh, through this process as well. Really want to take a look at economic development. Uh, you know, we're going to acknowledge we are in a challenging time with the economy, with COVID-19, and where the economy is going to go in the future. <clears throat> but as a comprehensive economic development strategy for the city, looking at ways to retain, support, and grow existing businesses and employers who are already here, attracting new businesses, um, supporting our commercial centers and entertainment centers, but also thinking about uh, the residents, the jobs, the access to jobs and type of jobs that are available in Santa Rosa and improving that access to employment or job skills uh, for that employment as well. So really taking, again, a very holistic approach to how we look at economic development in the future. Another really important topic, and as Andy mentioned, Kaiser Permanente uh, provided the city with a tremendous grant, which is fantastic, to really look at a, a citywide comprehensive healthy community strategy. And community health flows through all aspects of a general plan or all aspects of a community, safer neighborhoods, more walkable neighborhoods, but also things like access to healthy foods, parks, recreation, open space, access to healthcare, wellness, um, transportation options. This is really gonna be a key component of this process as we go through the next three years. Also very importantly, looking at environmental justice and social equity and racial equity. Um, the <clears throat> state of California has created some new laws in the last year and a half to require this in general plans. Uh, all of that's part of this process, but I do wanna note the city very intentionally is going be of it, be above and beyond the state's requirements on this topic and many others, especially community health. What we mean by this is the fair treatment of people of all races, cultures, incomes, with respect to development decisions, to allocation of public facilities, access to parks, recreation, impacts, uh, resiliency as we go through this general plan process. 
Uh, as I mentioned, there are specific requirements, but really the city is very proactive in making this a, a much bigger component of this project than most cities undertake and really looking at this on a neighborhood level citywide, um, which is a very exciting process uh, going forward. So this is uh, a bit of an eye chart, but it is available on the project website. This is a snapshot of essentially the next three years. And in a general plan process, uh, these, are, these are big planning projects and very involved projects. There'll be a lot of different documents, research, analysis, uh, and evaluations that are done before even a draft plan is created. I wanna highlight we are at the starting point of this process. And really the, the goal of today's discussion is to talk through the community engagement strategy and how we engage the community. Um, again, this is a very important project, but as you can see in that second line, that's line B, there are gonna be a lot of opportunities for community engagement uh, throughout the next three years and really an opportunity to create a, a refined vision for the city moving forward. Thanks so much for that presentation, Dan. Uh, really nice overview of the general plan update process. And now we wanna pause for a moment and just see if there are any comments or questions about the general plan update process that we can respond to now. And I know our colleague Blaze is working behind the scenes. Uh, Blaze, have we gotten any questions or comments from, uh, from many of our participants here? And just to remind people, you can go ahead and use the chat feature and in the chat, you would type your response, comment, or question to the item that's labeled questions, comments, and that'll be Blaze who's helping to, to respond to some of that. So Blaze, any questions or comments that we've received so far? No questions or comments just yet. Again. Okay, well, we're just getting warmed up here, everybody. So uh, that's okay, think about it. We'll have plenty of time to uh, unpack and further discuss any comments or questions that come to mind as we move through the program. So with that, why don't we go ahead and yeah. go ahead, please. We actually just had one question. Come in. We actually just had one question come in. Uh, the question is, are there going to be plans about climate action? That's the question that came in. Yes, ex excellent question. Um, the short answer is yes. The city's update the climate action plan is part of this project. And uh, while the climate action plan may be uh, a separate standalone document, the integration of the climate action plan, its strategies around greenhouse gas reduction, operations, um, and ways to become more sustainable will be closely integrated with the general plan as well. Um, so as we go through discussions and meetings moving forward, uh, there'll be discussions on both climate action planning and the general plan as we get this opportunity to sort of uh, bring both together. Thanks for that, Dan. Blaze, any other questions come in? Another question, yes. Um, will 2020 census data be incorporated in the update? Really good question, because uh, there'll be a, a little bit of time before we get that census data. Um, yes, right now the consultant team is putting together what's known as an existing uh, conditions report. Um, it's basically taking an inventory of all information that we available to us right now. Uh, we don't have the 2020 census information as of yet, but as we move through this process, when the updated census information uh, is available, in particular for the housing element, um, some of you know, may, may know that term, it's really the housing chapter of the general plan. When we get more involved in the housing element, uh, we will be pulling in 2020 census information, and we will also have time uh, ahead of the environmental analysis, which is probably about a year and a half or two years away, to also integrate uh, the census information as well. Okay. Great. Well, Blaze will keep and, us um, Oh, go ahead, Blaze. I might have time for a few more questions here. We have a couple more coming Great. in. Great. Let's um, hear one it. question is also asking, is uh, affordable and clean energy being addressed as part of this general plan update? Yes. And um, as we <clears throat> start going through some of these policy options and choices, 
Um, one is, uh, I think, identifying what those existing technologies are today and how they can be further implemented uh, throughout the city, um, but also allowing some policy flexibility because additional technologies may come in the future. So we have heard from staff and we, uh, from the community as well that energy resiliency um, is a key topic as well. And I think uh, strategically thinking through how that can be done um, or implemented uh, is another, another great topic to be discussed during the general plan update. I think we have a few more coming in. We have requests um, if, if the project team will be sharing ideas that we think are good um, for the whole, excuse me if I'm misinterpreting this question. So basically, I think the question is asking, will you share ideas that reinforce the concept that everything must tie together um, within, the general, within the general plan elements during the three-year process? Absolutely. Um, and one of our first round of community engagements that Jamil will talk about here in just a second, our first big session of engagement, will really be an opportunity to talk big picture about the community vision for the future and some assets, opportunities, and challenges. Um, during that conversation and those meetings, uh, website events, materials, we'll really want to gain not only all these different ideas or topics to be addressed, um, but as the commenter mentioned, also really highlighting the integration of all of these as part of the general plan process. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it does need to be as a document internally consistent, but also so many of these topics touch so many different issues or areas of the city and really making sure that everything's addressed uh, holistically is gonna be a very big goal of this project. Thank you. Um, just a few more here. Um, gender equality uh, being addressed in the part of the general plan update. Yes, um, gender equality and actually all, all elements of equality will be uh, addressed as well in, in various ways throughout this project. I <clears throat> should highlight um, both from a policy standpoint and how it's addressed, but also we're taking a very concerted approach for how we are starting this process and structuring it um, and making sure that there is no in, implicit bias or structural racism or other issues uh, from the starting point of this project. For instance, one of the things we're working on right now is a survey that will go online here in a few weeks that will provide residents and community members to map their neighborhood so instead of starting with existing neighborhood mapping or other structures, we really want to create this from the ground up and create a very equitable process. Um, so that's sort of a, a larger response on a, on a specific topic. And, and Jamila, you may want to, I don't know if you want to add to that as well, but we're taking a, a very, very um, uh, concerted effort to make sure this process is inclusive and open to all. Yeah, Dan, thank you so much. I think you said it very well. And just to add on or build on to that is that we are embedded in equity throughout every element of the general plan process. And uh, it's about both process and outcomes. And we want to be sure that this results in equitable outcomes for all Santa Rosa residents and community members. And we'll be applying an equity lens throughout every aspect of these various general plan elements. So Dan talked about land use, for example, we talked about neighborhood amenities, talked about environmental justice. And so we'll be very intentional about applying an equity lens throughout every aspect of the process. And we look to the community members to, uh, as to provide additional ideas, suggestions about how we can step our efforts up even more. So we wanna meet and exceed the requirements of the general plan process. And we wanna do so with the support, buy-in and ownership of the community. Great, thank you. A um, few more here. We have a request to state again the project team um, and their roles. Sure, and I'm going to pull that slide up for us, Dan. Uh, and I'll, I'll provide a, a verbal sort of bigger picture <laughs> a summary of this. City staff is very much in the lead on this project, um, and Andy is the, the key 
project manager on the city side, working closely with Amy Lyle and Claire Hartman uh, and many others on this project. On the consultant team side, Charlie Knox of Placework is the overall principal in charge. And as I mentioned, I'm the the day-to-day -day project manager. Jamila is the engagement project manager. Uh, but I do want to highlight on our consultant team, we actually have a uh, what I'll call a very deep bench of technical experts and topical experts. We have about seven different firms that are part of this team, uh, including wildland fire resiliency experts, sustainability experts, economic development, infrastructure, uh, pipes and roads infrastructure and mobility as well. So there's a big team on both the city and consultants end to make sure uh, we're really getting the experts we need to address this uh, enormous amount of topics that we'll be talking about this process. Right. I think we have uh, one more question here. Um, multifaceted. Uh, is this general plan process and final plan, are we going to be addressing various issues such as industry, innovation, infrastructure, uh, asking if feeding the hungry, home, homeless services, clean water, sanitation, we're, uh, just a, what is being encompassed from those subjects in the general plan update? Uh, an, an excellent question <laughs> to, uh, I think, summarize this whole process. All of the above. Um, and really, you know, this, the general plan, again, is this overarching policy document for anything around the built or the natural environment. Uh, and that includes the people who live and interact with the built and natural environment. So it really provides this opportunity to address all of these issues. And <clears throat> the the... The great value I've always found doing general plans is the way policies are structured are really orienting uh, actions on the behalf of city, but also other partners as well to solve or address these issues throughout the city. And one of the things we talked about with staff, and this is actually staff, staff's idea, and we love it, is uh, structuring the general plan more around a neighborhood focus. Uh, all these topics would be addressed, but almost at a neighborhood level, so we can really prioritize where the needs are and where uh, issues need to be addressed. Um, I do want to also mention that uh, information on our project team, uh, including the, the contract scope of work and all the detail behind that, is available on the project website as well if people would like to view some more information. So Blaze, we're gonna move on forward to the next part of our agenda here. And everyone, you can keep the questions and comments coming in, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and shift into the next part of our discussion, which is around engaging the community uh, and sharing some of the highlights from our community involvement strategy. So this is a document that outlines the key outreach strategies and methods, what are our communication tools, who are our target audiences, and what's the proposed timeline for implementation? And I see this document as really a foundational resource that we'll use throughout the life of our general plan update process. We see it as a living document. We want to continue to augment it as we move forward. There are often new emerging needs, opportunities, and issues that come up over three years. And so we have developed a document that is flexible, that's nimble, and that's able to be responsive to community concerns and desires. We have five key elements within our approach. One of them is about leveraging local networks. We wanna tap into the relationships that already exist and build on those. We're not starting from scratch. This is an incredibly well-networked community with a ton of community-based organizations and deep relationships that go from years and years, decades in fact. And we are excited to have Latino service providers uh, be a key partner and uh, integral member of our team as well. So that's just a little taste of some of the uh, networking that's already happening right now. We also want this to be a process that creates opportunities for inclusive and equitable participation. We want to hear from people who may not traditionally participate in processes like these due to resource or time constraints, for example. We want to make it easy for people to give their time and their, their, their ideas and input to us. We want to make it fun, engaging, thoughtful and we promise to use your time wisely with each of the activities that we have in our process here and pardon that that um, 
uh, ambulance going by. Something real is happening in my neighborhood right now. So, um, so we want to create opportunities for inclusive participation, and we have a number of different ways that we can do so. And I'm going to share some of that as we get further into uh, the presentation here. We also want to identify barriers to participation. What are the reasons why people might not be coming to these types of events? What are the reasons why they might not be able to participate? And for us to identify those barriers and then to work around them, to develop strategies and solutions that create a more equitable access to this process. And so we already have a lot of ideas from Spanish translation, for example, multilingual translation, tapping into our community-based partnerships, for example, providing incentives for participation and a number of other ideas that so we can remove barriers and make this a process that everyone feels welcomed and, and feels have they have, have, have excuse me like they have a seat at the table we also want to collaborate and inform general plan decision making this is really important for the input that we collect from all of our community-based activities to inform the next steps in the process to inform the decision making to inform the development of the policies that emerge from this process and then lastly it's about building long-term capacity for civic engagement this is uh, a really important important process and we want this to pay dividends down the line for the city to continue to nurture cultivate relationships with community members and organizations to inform the growth development and community design of Santa Rosa for many many years to come for many generations we want to cast a wide net as well and this includes residents um, youth limited English proficient individuals seniors Parents, children with families, for example, parents with families and things of that nature. We want to make sure that we are hearing from a wide variety of community residents as we move through the process. Everyone's voice is important and everyone is welcome. And we also have a number of other audiences that we're seeking to engage from the city of Santa Rosa departments to the county of Sonoma departments. We want our city council and elected officials to be at the table. We see Santa Rosa Metro Chamber, for example, business associations, large employers, local businesses. Educational institutions are also incredibly important. We want to be sure that we're tapping into schools and universities and other educational entities that play a role in the city. Transportation service providers is another one. We're looking at SMART, we're looking at Santa Rosa city buses, ride share programs, for example. Community organizations, I've already touched on this, but I think this is so important to underscore. We've already mentioned our partnership with Latino service providers, Los Cien, Santa Rosa Together, uh, Club Comunitario de Rosalind, Petaluma Blacks for Community Development, Sonoma Land Trust, just to name a few. And this is just a snapshot. I want to be really clear in saying that these are just some of the groups that we are highlighting on this slide, but we already have a really long, robust database of other community partners and agencies that we hope to engage and partner with to uh, ensure that we hear from a wide variety of residents. Neighborhood associations is also really key. This is a citywide process, but we also want to drill down to the neighborhood level and make sure that we're elevating the voices, ideas, and concerns of various neighborhoods and making sure that those individuals, those groups, uh, understand that they play a really important part in making sure that this is a robust general plan process. We're also looking at faith-based organizations. We want to be sure that we're tapping into those constituencies uh, and being sure to, to bring them along in the process as well. And and a host of other individuals, audiences, and groups. And we look to you all to help us. Let us know if you feel like there are some things or some groups or audiences that are missing. Don't be shy. We want to know. We want to engage. We want to connect. And we'll continue to do so throughout the program. So an important part of our, our strategy here is around guiding principles. And you can see there are seven of them there. Uh, some of them I've already touched on. One that I want to focus on right now is high touch and high tech. And we recognize during COVID-19 that uh, our ability to connect in person is somewhat limited right now. And so right now we're choosing to use some of our higher touch, quote unquote, opportunities to connect using, for example, Zoom, these webinar type meetings. Uh, connecting online, using social media, using the website, which is uh, under development right now. So it's balancing both high touch and high tech. And high touch might include going out, meeting the community where they are, going to farmers markets, going to uh, festivals and other community events, outdoor soccer games, for example, you name it, we'll be there. And we are gonna follow social distancing guidelines. Uh, but as soon as we're able to, we're excited to connect with community members face-to-face, -to, -face, to hear your thoughts and concerns. 
Um, and so that's a really important principle that's guiding our effort here. It's also important that we be clear, focused, and understandable. And oftentimes when you have a general plan process, there may be a lot of jargon that's used, a lot of planner ease, if you will. And we want to distill it down to its purest essence. We want everyone to connect to what are the key concepts and ideas in our process, and what are their thoughts about how we can address some of the challenges facing Santa Rosa. And we can do so by being really clear uh, and also providing high-level graphics that we don't always have to communicate just with words, but there are visuals that we want to use. And Dan already has shared some of the maps, for example, some of the other illustrations that we'll be using throughout the process. Equity, as we talked about, is interwoven throughout every element, throughout every aspect of our process, and uh, will continue to be so. Respect is the one I want to end on. We talked at the very beginning around um, civil conversation and dialogue around this. We respect each and every one of you and thank you for making time to be with us. And we promise to carry that theme throughout every aspect of our engagement process. Uh, we wanna make sure that people feel respected, their time is valued and their ideas are considered in the most earnest way. Uh, so those are some of the guiding principles. And again, this is all available in our community involvement strategy, which is on the website. It's a really important resource that we'll use throughout the program, the project rather, and I encourage you to take a look at it if you haven't already done so. And we wanna invite your comments and ideas around how we can expand the community involvement strategy even more. What are some ways that we can augment that document to better connect with residents, community members, and other stakeholders? So I'll pause for a moment and just get a sense of, do you have any comments or questions regarding the community engagement approach or those guiding principles that I mentioned? And I'll look to Blaze to, to see if you have any comments or questions. So we have a few comments came in at the beginning. I can uh, I'm read some off here. One of them is uh, we have some excitement around the neighborhood focus of the process and that we think that will help organize the neighborhood in the long term. And a, another comment, um, reaching out to Black organizations and Black students is important. We are less than 2% in this county, but our voices must count as well. And please reach out at Black Student Union and at SRJC and SSU as well. Uplifting Black leaders as young leaders is important. And Thanks another comment that. came in. Blaze, let me just respond to that one real quick, though. So I, I sure. think that, uh, first of all, thanks so much for these comments that are coming in, everyone. We really appreciate it. Uh, it helps to round out our thinking around how we can be even more equitable in our approach to engagement. And in terms of, um, you know, making sure that we hear from the, the African-American community within Santa Rosa, that's a key focus of our approach. Um, you know, we want to hear from all community members and, and particularly those who are underrepresented in processes like this. And so we'll be doing some targeted outreach throughout the entire program. And we want to tap into the BSU, for example, the Black Student Union and other groups. We also really want to be mindful of how the Black Lives Matter movement will impact the general plan process and to think about ways that we can address structural racism uh, throughout this planning project and to identify solutions to address or redress some of the, the issues of the past. Uh, so really appreciate that question and comment rather, and uh, that'll be a key consideration as we move forward in the engagement process. But Blaze, let's hear another one. So there's a concern about um, some technical information. So a lot of uh, concern about some community members, participants maybe being more kind of uh, have a lack of understanding of some of the technical concepts. So it'd be important to help uh, these individuals and groups understand the technical projects under consideration and that a virtual explanation would help a lot uh, since uh, so people could learn at their own pace and time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really, really important point there, and I appreciate the person who raised it. Um, one of the things we want to do is provide a baseline of understanding for what is the general plan? What is it? And Dan's already illuminated some of the kind of key factors that go into developing a general plan, but we want to provide something of a general plan 101, and this will be a key feature of a lot of our engagement activities. It's just educating and informing the community about what are the core components of a general plan, why is it important, and how can they leverage the general plan to improve their quality of life and so that's going to be a key feature of really most of our engagement activities is just providing that baseline of understanding for everyone to get on board and understand how to leverage this process to improve their community's quality of life Great, thank you and uh and one more question here um will feedback from neighborhood organizations be filtered through an equity lens to prioritize needs in the city 
Yes, great question there. Absolutely. We're going to filter everything through an equity lens. Um, and uh, we also want to invite and encourage community-based organizations, neighborhood groups to participate. We've already gotten some really great feedback and ideas from some community organizations that have already helped to inform our thinking about how we can further augment our approach to engagement. And so we want to keep those coming in and we will continue to be nimble and responsive to all of that great input that we get. So the, the big answer is yes. And we can drill down further by having more detailed conversations with individuals and organizations as we move through the process. All right, thank you. And we have a few more. So we have a comment, awesome guidelines and strategies, and a question, will all resources, surveys, and outreach be available in Spanish? Great question. Yes. And I, I want to just, um, as a plug for an upcoming community conversation, we have another one very similar to this model that we have here today. We'll do the very same thing in Spanish, and that'll be next Saturday. Uh, so just a, a plug for that. We'll cover that a little bit more towards the end of our agenda here. But yes, we definitely want to make sure we understand that Santa Rosa has a large Latino population, and we want to make sure that everyone uh, is able to participate and engage. And so we'll be translating the large bulk of our materials into Spanish. Spanish. The community involvement strategy, for example, is translated into Spanish. We have that summary document available on the website. Uh, we'll also be working very closely with Latino service providers and other um, kind of Latino serving organizations throughout Santa Rosa to make sure that we're tapping into the ideas, concerns, uh, strategies that uh, those community members want to raise. And so absolutely we want this to be a multicultural, multilingual process and everyone has a seat at the table. Okay, thank you. Another, another question here. More of a concern. So there's a concern, this comment reads, you're concerned about outreach and technology. Many don't have access to the internet, but most have cell phones. Will you be including texting? Next thing, yes, you know, I really appreciate that. So that's something that we can certainly build more into our approach here. We recognize that internet access is something in the digital divide is very real in all communities across the country. And so we're being very strategic and intentional about making sure that we're bridging that digital divide and that we're not relying solely on quote unquote high tech channels to connect with people. We'll be using community based organizations, working very closely with them to tap into their relationships and their constituencies. Phone baking, for example, is another one. We will be out in public as well once we're able to do so, to connect with people in real time, in person, to get their thoughts and ideas, and meeting them at places where that's convenient for them. So we're gonna go out to the grocery stores, we're gonna go out to the community centers, to the libraries, to the soccer fields, to the other athletic e events, for example, and make sure that we're connecting with people on their terms uh, when they feel like it's convenient for them to give input. So we definitely want to be mindful of the fact that everyone doesn't have access to uh, digital tools and so we can use things like texting to better connect as well as a host of other strategies. These are great questions everyone. So if there isn't anything else, Blaze, we're going to go ahead and keep the next part of our program here moving. And uh, again, I invite everyone to keep the questions coming in. This is all really good input that we're collecting from you right now. We appreciate this feedback. So I want to share now a little bit about our, our partnership with Kaiser Permanente. And we mentioned that they have provided a very generous Healthy Communities Grant. And this is focused on providing opportunities for us to deepen our engagement with underrepresented communities. It also will give us additional resources to focus focus on healthy city policies and actions. Uh, we want this to be a, a key component, a cornerstone of our approach throughout the entire general plan process. And the funding really allows us to add and to expand on many of our engagement activities. We want to use some of these dollars to help better resource our engagement program and to connect with the communities who, again, who may not traditionally participate for a variety of reasons, but we can do what we can do to tap into those networks and those communities. And we're excited about leveraging this Kaiser grant to do so. There's also the partnership 
partnership with Latino service providers. They are a key partner in our entire program here. A lot of the uh, work that we'll be doing with them will be focused on community outreach and engagement. Youth engagement is also a critical component of the project. This is a plan for the future and the youth are the future. And we wanna make sure they're the present and the future, I should say. And we wanna make sure they're looped into every aspect of the planning process. And again, I think this is where that baseline of understanding that general plan 101 becomes even more important. We want to make sure that people understand what are the key components of a general plan and why is it important to, to their communities. And so uh, that'll be a key feature of some of our work with Latino service providers is just making sure that people understand the role and the importance of a general plan and then how to leverage it to improve their community. I also want to call your attention to this community advisory committee, also known as the CAC. And uh, this is a really important part of our community involvement strategy as well. And we see the CAC as a, a cross section of Santa Rosa community members. And, and these folks will serve as the ambassadors to the project. This will be a really important key touch point, touchstone as we move through the project. They'll be providing feedback on products such as the city profile, such as our existing conditions analysis, uh, land use and circulation alternatives, our draft general plan as well. So this will be a diverse constituency of individuals that we use as a sounding board, that we use to test ideas, and again, to, to make sure that we are ready to go out to the full public um, and to share some of the key elements of the planning process. So uh, more to come on this, but this will be a really important feature of our community involvement strategy. So this is a high level illustration of the community, community involvement process here. And you can see we have five key phases. I know it's a bit of an eye test here. It's also available on the website as well in our summary document, but it just articulates what are the key activities, um, the key uh, engagement opportunities that you all have to inform the process as we move from phase one all the way through phase five. So it just gives you a high level overview of where the best intervention points are, where we're hoping to get input and, and how that input will be used to inform some of the major work products throughout the planning process. Uh, so this will likely be con continue to be updated as we move through the program, but uh, this is just a, a nice snapshot of all of the engagement opportunities, the breadth and depth of engagement that'll happen throughout our process. So um, I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly because this is all in our CIS document and it's a lot of information here and I wanna make sure we have time to hear from all of you. Uh, but this in these next couple of slides I'm going to share with you what are some of the key engagement activities for each phase of our planning process and this first slide here is around the ongoing activities and these things will be happening as we move through all of the GPU process and I've already touched on the community advisory committee the CAC meeting so they'll meet about 10 times or so and you can see the items with an asterisk there the items that are mentioned with an asterisk, those are partially funded through the Kaiser Permanente Healthy Communities Grant. So that's, uh, again, really providing us with some additional resources to augment our engagement program. Uh, so we'll have CAC meetings regularly. We also have a technical advisory committee, which consists of City of Santa Rosa staff, some county departments, and some other individuals who provide that technical expertise that we need to um, keep in mind as we move through the planning process. Translation services. We already had a great question about, well, what will be available in Spanish and other languages? Uh, and we have a, a, a line item here that will help us address and meet those multilingual needs throughout the process. We also have a website and this is under development as we speak. We're gonna be excited to launch it in the next couple of weeks or so. And it'll be a clearinghouse, a place where you all can come and connect with the process and see the latest and greatest of what's happening with the general plan update and uh, to connect with us as well. In addition, we'll have some online surveys. Uh, we'll have the first one coming up fairly soon here, and uh, we'll have likely maybe one or two others that uh, we, we share throughout the three-year process. But this is a way for people to connect um, at their own time from the comfort of their home, uh, on their way to work, for example, or whenever it's convenient for them. Uh, so online surveys will be a really important tool. One that I'm really excited to share with you as well is this general plan video series. And I think this speaks again to this idea of a, a 101. What are the basics of a general plan and how can people connect with the process and so we'll be producing a series of videos um, in different languages as well that illustrate and, and convey why the general plan is important and how people can leverage this process to improve their quality of life 
We also are planning to have a general plan studio, and this can be both in person and online. And this is, you know, it might be, for example, hosted at one of the local community based organizations or at a community facility. And people can come in and get a sense of what are the, the latest maps, the latest graphics, the latest data related to the general plan process. They can get input, they can talk with staff, for example. So we want this to be very interactive, really engaging, and people can come in on their free time and just stop in for a moment and learn what's happening with the process and share their thoughts and ideas. Another one I want to share with you is this Growing Better Places game. And this is all about civic-based gaming. And as we have mentioned a little bit throughout our presentation, we want this process to be fun. We want it to be engaging. And what we found is that civic-based gaming is one way to engage people in uh, who learn differently. You know, everyone doesn't learn by reading off of a PowerPoint, for example. And so this is another way for us to connect with people of different ages, of different ethnicities, uh, and for them to understand why this process is important and what are some of the trade-offs associated with different options uh, from the various general plan element items. Youth engagement is also a really critical component of the planning process. And again, we're going to be working closely with Latino service providers, the local schools and universities as well to make sure that we're tapping into what are the concerns of the youth and how can this planning process address those. So uh, those are just uh, some highlights of what's going to be ongoing engagement activities. And then we have uh, a few other phases in the process. Um, the ones I want to call out to you now is this number four, which is the community discussions and events set number one. And this is all about our vision. Uh, you all will be helping to craft what's the vision for Santa Rosa over the next 10, 20, 30 years, for example, um, and how can we use this process to set that vision into motion. We'll also be hosting a series of focus groups as well. Some of them may be virtual, some may be in person, depending upon uh, the health restrictions, but uh, that's another really important touch piece for us to hear some intimate responses around what are the key issues and opportunities facing the city of Santa Rosa and particular community groups. We also have uh, pop-up events that we're planning in phase two as well. And this is all about meeting people where they are. We're gonna go out to the community. We're gonna hear their thoughts and concerns. We imagine going to festivals. We've imagined going to libraries farmers markets, grocery stores, other organizations events as well. We also are planning to have a plan van and this is all about mobile outreach and uh, we will wrap a van with the logo and project identity of the general plan and go out into the community and we'll go wherever you are, wherever you recommend we go, we'll, we'll be there. And so uh, we'll be bringing our surveys, we'll be bringing our display boards and whatnot and collecting input and just hearing concerns and ideas as well. Uh, a double-decker bus is another uh, really fun and um, interesting feature of our engagement. So people will be able to do tours of the city and what are some of the key areas that we want to focus on and maybe getting outside of their neighborhood and going to see another part of the city that they don't get to. And what are the concerns of those community members, for example? So we're excited about this mobile feature to get people more engaged in areas where perhaps they don't visit that often or they don't know much about to understand what are their concerns and issues. We'll also be frequently going to council and community, or excuse me, commissions uh, to share updates and also to hear from those leaders uh, about what are the key issues that we should be focusing on in the project. Phase three is very similar. We'll be going out into the community in what we're calling this preferred alternatives section here. So we want to get a sense of what of all of the alternatives that we've identified, what is what are the alternatives that you want to focus on? What's your preferred choice? And uh, we'll be doing a, a lot of community engagement to get a sense of that. And again, going back out to council and commissions to hear their thoughts and ideas as well. And similarly for phase four, it'll be more about the draft general plan document uh, that'll be developed. And we also will be uh, finalizing the EIR, the environmental impact review. Uh, so that'll be happening during phase four. And in phase five, we hope to wrap it all up with the general plan adoption and the EIR adoption. So we'll be doing a number of community presentations, commission presentations. Uh, we'll be going to city council hearings as well, uh, all to make sure that the plan is grounded in community sentiment and community ideals and community data as well. 
So I know that was a lot, everyone. And again, I want to mention that we have this available on the website. I hope that you all have had a chance to take a look at it. If not, feel free to do so at your leisure. But I want to pause for a moment and just invite any questions or comments on the engagement techniques or activities that I just mentioned. Blaze, are we getting any questions on, question. on that section? Yeah, we just got one question come in so far. Um, question is, will the board game be online? Will the board game be online? Yes, we have that option. I appreciate that question. So one of the things that we've done in other projects is we actually had it checked out at the library as well. So we'll have both physical um, physical sets of the game board to be available for checkout and distribution. We can have uh, sets available at community-based organizations as well. So there'll definitely be a physical component of the game that's available, but it can also be online as well. We want this to be both high touch and high tech. And so we'll provide it in an online format also, but that's a great question. And another question came in and uh... Question is, what are the preferred alternative activities going to discuss? Good question. So what are the preferred alternatives? That we're going to, we, we don't know them just yet because we haven't gotten a sense from the community as to what their general alternatives might be. Uh, but we'll use community input and engagement to get a sense of that. And I, I invite Dan to share any other feedback on preferred alternatives. Yeah, it, it's a great question about process. Um, so as we go through a general plan update, uh, process <clears throat> early on in these initial discussions we want to really work with the community to identify uh, opportunities challenges key issues from that we'll develop a series of alternatives um, it could be three it might be four it might be two depending you know how the discussion goes but the alternatives are going to look at different options for how the city could grow where things get provided economic differences to evaluate as well. <clears throat> and through that discussion and evaluation, it eventually leads, and it's kind of a technical term, but to a preferred alternative, which is really a combination of maps and diagrams and emerging policies. The, it's essentially kind of like a draft general plan. Um, and we use that to then do the full environmental analysis to really understand what uh, impacts or issues may or may not be associated with it. It's still very draft and has the ability to change up until we actually turn, pull it all together in a draft plan. So it's more of a, a process step, but as far as the content of that, the content of the preferred alternative will come out of all of these engagement efforts. Thanks, so that's all the, all the questions I'm seeing so far. Feel free to send more in. I'll, I'll read them off. But that's, that's it. Great. Thanks, Blaze. Thanks, everyone, for the questions and comments that are coming in. So the last part of uh, what we want to share related to the CIS or the Community Involvement Strategy is around the metrics of success. And this is something that we wanted to give special attention to in today's conversation because it's so important that we understand who we're reaching um, and how well we're doing in reaching those individuals. And so we've outlined four key metrics. And the first one is accessibility. We wanna be sure that our involvement process is accessible, that it's welcoming, that it's understandable to everyone who wants to participate. And some of the ways that we'll track this are through surveys, through evaluation forms. As you noted, we have some polling in this conversation today. We'll have some kind of close out evaluation polls that we ask you all to do as well. And this can happen both in person and online. And it'll just get a sense of what's your opinion on the overall accessibility of the general plan update process and how can we do better? We recognize that it's all about continuous improvement and we look to the community to help us uh, step up our efforts and, and be even stronger in, in making the process accessible. So that's the first one I want to mention to you. The second one is around reach. 
And this is that the community involvement process will involve and inform as many community members as possible. Uh, we want to hear from everyone. We want to cast a wide net in this effort and tap into those existing community networks. And we strive to reach all of the households and businesses in the city through our process. And some of the ways that we'll do that are through workshops, through focus groups, through mailers, social media, surveys, radio advertisements in a variety of languages, and many other creative approaches. Uh, so we'll use some of these different activities to measure our reach, quote unquote, in tapping into community perspectives. The third one is diversity. Uh, it's really important that we um, have a diversity of ethnicities, incomes, geographies, age groups, and special needs of the Santa Rosa population, that they be involved in this process from the very beginning. And today is just the start of that, um, and really a continuation of the listening sessions that happened in advance of these sessions here today. And so we'll be tracking and measuring the diversity of our participants, making sure that they reflect the demographic and the geographic composition of Santa Rosa's population. So we have a very clear sense of what the demographics are of Santa Rosa, and we'll be uh, doing our best to mirror that in terms of our engagement activities. The last one that I want to call your attention to is around impact. And it's really important to us that you all understand that your input will be influencing and informing decision making. Your participation, your ideas, your comments, um, it will all be really important factors in influencing and informing the outcomes of this process. And so we'll be using surveys and other evaluative tools uh, to get a sense of how well you feel your input has informed the overall decision making process. And you can see some of that will be reflected in our engagement summaries, for example. You can see how your input led to different decisions in terms of process and policy decisions. So um, impact is really key for us. So these are some of the four key metrics that we'll use to indicate our success um, and our continual evolution in engaging the community as well. So I'm gonna pause for just a moment and see if you all have any thoughts, suggestions, or ideas around metrics of success. Actually, had a, had a couple questions come in uh, around the community engagement and uh, Sky, yes. Great, let's hear it, Blaze. Um, one of them being, sure thing, one of them being your community involvement strategy will be reviewed by city council in August, but you also say it will be a work in progress. By what process will you be revising the strategy as you go along? Who will approve changes and how? Sure, great question. So we want to send the draft CIS before the city council uh, based on the timeline that we shared earlier. And so this is just to get general agreement and approval of the outline of approaches that we have here in that CIS document. That being said, we also wanna be nimble. And if we find that there are needs in phase two or phase three of the process to course correct or to adjust or adapt our approach, we're able to do that. And so we see it as something of a living document, but it does give you a general framework for how we'll be engaging the public. And we'll be working very closely with city staff uh, as well to help articulate what are some of the shifts and changes in, in the community involvement strategy that we need to make. Great, thank you. Another question just came in. Um, someone read about the focus groups and the strategy. How will participants be chosen? Great question. So that's uh, something that is still under development. We haven't gotten quite there just yet, but we definitely want it to be a process that's equitable, that's inclusive, and that incorporates a variety of viewpoints. And so uh, we will work with the community to establish the criteria for the focus groups. What are some of the key questions that we'll pose? Working very closely with the city staff. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we anticipate having a robust discussion about how we organize the composition of those focus groups and the questions that we pose. Thank you. Another question. Will state lawmakers be engaged on issues that require state involvement, whether through funding or resources, in order to, be in order to better address them? I'm going to turn that one over to Dan. Sure. Uh, I'll start, and, and maybe Andy or others on staff want to add to it as well. Um, there's a lot of integration and discussions with other agencies, local level and state level, as you go through a general plan update project. Um, you know, in particular, CAL FIRE is one uh, state agency that will want to engage through this process 
best practices, policy strategies as well. Um, so we do have included within this process and within the contract discussions with regional agencies and state agencies. Um, ultimately, this is very much a city document, a city policy document, um, but making sure we're coordinating with those folks is key, as well as I think coordinating with um, regional and state uh, elected officials as well on particular topics where the city may want to uh, advocate for different policies or different changes for good reasons. So the, the long answer of saying yes, <laughs> the integration with other agencies will be key, or discussions, I should say, with other agencies will be key. And thank you, Dan. I'll, I'll add just a little bit of specifics there. With the housing element, for instance, we are currently involved with the regional discussion on the housing needs analysis and the allocation for housing that we need to account for in the housing element. In addition, law changes at the state level all the time. And, and, and because so, the, the general plan truly must be a living document. So for instance, the environmental justice guidelines are changing right now as we're speaking. And, and this team, we're very pleased is on board. They have a lot of capacity and, and expertise that'll help us and, st and us staff be able to keep on top of those changes so that when this general plan goes forward, it is current and relevant. Great. I think you all have a few more questions, comments here. Um, next question, exactly how will you measure whether your participants mirror the diversity of the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So uh, one of the things we'll be doing is taking a look at what's the demographic profile currently of Santa Rosa and making sure that we are mirroring that in our outreach and engagement. And so for many, if not most of our outreach activities, we'll have an opportunity for people to share their demographic profile with us. So for example, on surveys, we'll have a key set of standard questions that we ask and get a sense of how much of that community is mirrored in the demographic profile of the city at large. And if we find that there are moments or times when we're not so successful in reaching the full demographic representative population, then we can course correct in real time and we can micro target we can go for example if we're not hearing enough from youth or seniors or african americans or latino community members that we can adjust our outreach activities and that's again i, I think it's speaking to the nimbleness associated with the community involvement strategy is if we find that there are voices that are not being represented then we can go out into the community and make sure that we're targeting those voices in a very real and intentional way um, so those are some of the strategies that we'll use is we'll have demographic questions associated with each of our outreach activities and from there, we'll analyze and assess, well, where are there gaps? Where are we missing voices? And from there, we can micro-target and make sure that those voices are included in the follow-up activities. All right, thank you. And just uh, a couple comments here. We have one comment. Santa Rosa needs a advocacy, inclusion, diversity, and equity for all. And another comment, love statement the metrics. I think you should also survey people who did not participate as well as those who participated. Great, yes, great ideas. And as always, send in more comments, questions as we go along, but for now, that's, uh, we don't have any more today. So. Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much, Blaze, for reading those off. And thanks, everyone, for sharing those comments and ideas. Uh, let's keep them coming as we move towards the, the tail end here of our program. And so next steps. And uh, I'll just share this, Andy. So we wanted to get into, let you know that in terms of next steps, we have a community conversation coming up. It'll be monolingual Spanish speaking conversation. It's scheduled for next Saturday, July 25th from 10 to 1130. We'll have the very same format that we had in today's conversation, just that it'll be conducted conducted all in Spanish. So if you all have colleagues, friends, neighbors who you think would be interested in joining that conversation, please feel free to share the information with them. We'll be doing a full-on outreach push to make sure that we have some good representation in that conversation next Saturday as well. We also invite you to share additional ideas or comments on the draft CIS or the Community Involvement Strategy. Uh, we want to be sure that it's as robust and, and um, creative and intentional as possible. And so we'll be presenting that to city council 
in early September. Uh, so please feel free to share any additional comments or ideas. We've already gotten a lot from you today that we can use to maybe flesh things out a bit more. Be sure to submit any additional comments to the website or excuse me, the email address that you see there, gpcomment at srcity.org by July 25th, if possible. And that will just give us enough time to build in your comments, respond to them in a way that um, lets us make sure that it's representative of your feedback. Andy, looks like you want to chime in here. Oh, I just wanted to say a plug that uh, we hope to get to the council in, in on July or August 18th. So, uh, but please, all of you who are watching, go to the website. The, the uh, final confirmed date will be published there and hopefully again, it's in, in August 18th. Excellent, thanks Andy. So the next part here, just a couple of more next steps and what's coming next in our process. We're also developing an online survey uh, and this will be a chance for community members to share what they see as the opportunities and challenges facing Santa Rosa. Uh, we are excited that they'll have a mapping feature and Dan commented a little bit on, on this at the top of the meeting. It's an opportunity for you to define your neighborhood. We don't want to use old maps or maps from the past that um, may not be entirely reflective of how community members see and envision their neighborhoods. And so we're looking at you all to help define and map your own neighborhoods and also share what are some of the issues, assets, and opportunities that we can address in the planning process. The first round of community virtual meetings and online events will take place in September. We're going to kick those off in September. So right around the corner here, but we're excited to launch those, uh, building on a lot of the input that we've gotten from these community conversations as well. So be on the lookout for more of that coming soon. And everyone, we're near the, the tail end of our official program here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and speaking of metrics and measuring success and tracking uh, representation, we wanna give you all a chance to give some feedback here uh, via some additional polling questions. So I'm gonna launch our next question for us. Oh, oopsie daisy. And the next question we wanna ask is, did this meeting address the topics you wanted to cover? Did this meeting address the topics you wanted to cover? Yes or no? And no hard feelings, but it's good to see that um, a lot of the responses are coming in as yes. I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll here right now in poll. So overwhelmingly, yes, uh, the meeting addressed it. For the individual who listed no, I would encourage you to type into the chat uh, what it was that you wanted to cover that we didn't get to today. And we'll be sure to perhaps address it later in our program, which we have a free open session to discuss other comments, questions, and ideas. So feel free to type that into the chat um uh if you would like so as you all can see we had about 95 percent of people say yes we did cover the items that we wanted to in this discussion one person indicating no for that person we do want to hear from you so uh, go ahead and feel free to type it in the chat to questions comments and we can see if we can address that as we move forward and let's go to our next question here did you have enough time to share your ideas and to ask questions. Did you have enough time? Okay. So I'm going to end the poll here. Looks like we've heard from a good amount of everyone. And the results are, yes, 88% felt like you did have enough time to share your ideas and ask questions. Two people or 13% indicated no. So again, if you have questions, concerns, ideas that we didn't address, go ahead and type them into the chat and we can cover them today. So um, rest assured that we will have plenty of time uh, the remainder of our program if you'd like to share additional comments and ideas. And the last question that we want to put to you is, would you be interested in staying involved in the GPU process? 
would you be interested based on all that you've heard today um, would you be interested in staying involved in this process Okay, let's see here. So overwhelmingly, the answer is yes, I am interested. So I think we've um, done a good job of presenting what the plan will entail and how you can get involved. So we appreciate this feedback and we will be looking to you all to stay involved, stay connected as we move through our program and through the process here. So as you can see, overwhelmingly, yes, you're interested in being involved and that's fantastic, everyone. So uh, we appreciate this input, uh, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Uh, we will be incredibly responsive as we move through the process and I will look to you to, to help keep us accountable. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just shift into letting you know, again, we want to thank you for participating today. It's been a real pleasure to connect. Uh, we hope to see you in person very soon, but in the meantime, hopefully this was a way for you to feel engaged and involved in the GPU process. If you have other comments, thoughts, ideas, you can go ahead and send them to gpcomment at srcity.org. You can also go to our website there. You can see the uh, website address. It's a bit long right now, uh, but one other thing you can do is you can just simply Google Santa Rosa General Plan and uh, you can find our website that way as well. Um, so I wanna thank you all so much. Blaze, did we get any other comments, questions coming in? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we have a few more coming in. If we don't uh, still have time, we'd love to, love to float these to you all, get some, get some comments, questions answered here. Um, first one, are we, is there going to be a, uh, a date for having a American Sign Language workshop or outreach since there's a large non-hearing community in Santa Rosa? Good question. Good question. So that's something that we can take under advisement and think about how we can integrate that uh, very thoughtfully into the program here. So um, we can take that and share it with our city colleagues and see when the best time and place would be for something like that. But we appreciate that feedback and uh, we'll definitely take that under advisement. Thank you. Another Another comment slash question, how about using poll functions of Zoom to assess those who respond to your outreach? And this is within this and other, other events. Absolutely, yes. We wanna use all of the features of this high tech engagement to collect input. And so we can certainly create some poll questions that capture that person's comments there. So um, we, we did a little bit of that today, but we can certainly expand on what the polling features can do to help us get a sense of how well people are connecting to the process. Great, another question. To find information about these conversations takes a bit of searching. Is there a way to make these opportunities more visible on the Santa Rosa Connection site? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I appreciate that feedback there. And we want to make it easy for people to connect. So we've done a pretty major push via social media, through the website, through eBlast. We also had some radio advertisements as well. But what I'm hearing you say is that it needs to be even more accessible. And so we can identify some ways to uh, better push out the message that these conversations are happening. I think the idea that you shared was around the Santa Rosa Connect website. And so we can uh, work with our city staff colleagues to tap into that. That, that channel as well. Thank you. Um, another question regarding some community comments and feedback from the community engagement. How frequently and how are we going to be sharing what comments we are receiving through the process? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, good question. So for example, in this community conversation, we'll have a summary that emerges from 
from this one and the one on Sun or next Saturday, excuse me. Um, and so we will summarize and synthesize all of the input and questions that we get and post that out on the website. Um, so it'll be available pretty closely after the meetings conclude. Um, we want to give enough time for staff to respond to the questions in a thoughtful and, and detailed way. Uh, but we'll post the uh, feedback that we get in a summary document on the website. And that'll be the case for, for most of our engagement activities, whether it be surveys, whether it be pop-up events, workshops, we'll always do a thorough process documentation and give a sense of what the questions were, what the responses are, and then how to stay involved. Thank you. We have a few more coming in. Um, it, we have a, so there's a comment piggybacking on the um, American, American Sign Language comment before, um, question before, it was saying that there is an Earl Baum Center for the Blind in Santa Rosa, and that'd be a good resource to connect with to further expand engagement. Great. Yes. And then the comment we'll about definitely reach out to them. Please. And a comment about the polling questions being too narrow, and we're suggesting that maybe something in the middle between some of those responses to get more accurate answers. Okay, that's helpful feedback. And there's a question: there's an individual still not clear on who approves mid-course correction in the, in the process. So I think that the answer for that is city staff would be in charge of approving mid-course corrections. They are leading this effort and we are working in close collaboration with them, but it would be up to city staff. And I, you know, venture to guess that their, uh, their senior leadership and executive team would also be involved as well, but that would be decisions based upon city uh, discussions. And Jamila, I'll, I'll add to it, your, your response. I, the, um, the document that's been drafted is something that will hopefully be inclusive of all the tools that we're using. And uh, as we go through three years of various phases of the general plan update and the environmental review, um, there may be additions to the tools that we don't see today that become, uh, that reveal themselves in the future. I don't envision this document would be narrowing the tools, but rather potentially expanding the tools as we go forward. Um, and really, as we move forward into each of the phases and we have an element that we're working on, you can refer to that chart that was uh, earlier shown on the screen. We'll, we'll look at what works in the past and, and deploy the tools that will be effectively work in, in a next phase. So it, it's gonna be dynamic and living that way. Um, and, and finally, we will always be reporting out and transparent through the website, through meeting processes, um, on, on how we are working on engagement and using our metrics of success to be able to judge whether what we're doing is working well and whether we need to do something different. And we have a follow-up question that so uh, it's asking kind of which city staff or which which body will uh, ultimately approve the uh, ECIS the community involvement strategy. The um, the community involvement strategy will be presented to council uh, in a report as a recommended uh, plan or approach. So we will be. Uh, striving for their uh, agreement going forward. Great, thank you. Um, another question, will the re recordings of these meetings be published immediately? Good question. So we would like to provide a, a summary. And so we often want to 
uh, review and reflect on the questions, comments that were asked and give time for city staff to provide some thoughtful comments and responses. And so uh, we aim to get them up shortly after the meeting, but um, give us a little bit of time for us to uh, make sure that we're being able to be thoughtful in our responses to the questions that were posed. Uh, but in general, we're aiming for about a week or so after the meetings. Thank you. And we have a comment here. Super, that thing is super important to fulfill Santa Rosa's potential and dignity and equality in a healthy environment. Sustainable development goals were unanimously adopted by other by other countries, and we have to do our part here in Santa Rosa for 2030. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments, Blaze? I believe that captured everything. One, uh, one quick follow up to the comment about uh, having this information available. I do want to also just note that, as we mentioned earlier, we're recording this discussion and can have this video available pretty quickly. Um, we are also recording a, a closed caption text version of this as well. So in addition to the more formal summary we respond to comments, we're also recording this discussion as well. So just a reminder. Great, so if there aren't any other questions or comments related to the CIS or to the general plan process, uh, wanna just thank you all so much for making time to be with us here today um, and invite you to share any other comments or questions with city staff. We're available for some informal discussion as well. Uh, we have Andy and some of his colleagues on the line with us here today. So um, if you have other comments or questions you'd like to, to pose, now would be a great time to do so. If not, you have the access to the email address and to the website, um, but I want to just give a moment uh, for you all to share any additional feedback with us. We can have a comment Roland, uh, stating recruiting more participants would be improved by publishing soon. By publishing soon? Yeah, I think that means the, uh, the recording. Following up on that discussion. Sure, sure. Yeah, we can get the video recording up pretty soon. Um, so we can work on that. So everyone, if there aren't any other questions or comments for us right now, um, again, we wanna thank you for making time to be with us today. I wanna thank our city colleagues and the other members of our team who you didn't get to see per se, but who are definitely here working behind the scenes. Um, we will get the video, the recording out fairly soon and uh, look forward to participation in the meeting next Saturday, which will be a Spanish monolingual speaking community conversation. So if you have colleagues or friends or neighbors who you think would be interested in that, uh, we'd appreciate your help in spreading the word. Uh, we encourage you all to stay involved and stay connected to the process. And uh, with that, thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Okay, thanks everyone. Really appreciate your time. Thank you all.